Hermeticism is an ancient spiritual, philosophical, and magical tradition. It's rich, complex, and an extraordinary amalgam of many different ideas. The scope of Hermeticism is so massive that you'll find people saying things like, I've studied it for nearly 20 years and I would need another 20 just to scratch the surface. All this can make Hermeticism an intimidating topic to approach. And in fact, a lot of the resources explaining Hermeticism online, while informative, can be very confusing and complex. So in this video, I'm going to try to simplify Hermeticism as much as possible and cover everything you need to know. Here's Hermeticism in a nutshell. But before we go on, Please subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated with all our latest content and join our vibrant community. Origins of Hermeticism Hermeticism originated sometime in late antiquity, which covers the period between the 3rd to the 8th centuries AD, about the same time as early Christianity and several other doctrines that focused on mysticism. This was a time of cultural cross-pollination. After Alexander the Great's conquests, Greek thought mingled with the ancient wisdom of Egypt and the Middle East, leading to a fertile period of philosophical and spiritual exploration. This era, known as Hellenistic Egypt, was marked by a blending of Greek and Egyptian religious and philosophical traditions. Hermeticism is one of the results of this blending. Quite literally, if you merge the Greek god Hermes with the Egyptian god Thoth, you get the central sage of Hermeticism, Hermes Trismegistus. But who exactly is he? The name Hermes Trismegistus means thrice greatest Hermes because he's supposed to have mastery over three areas of wisdom, alchemy, astrology, and thergy. But more on that later. Most scholars agree that Trismegistus wasn't a real person, but instead a fiction created by merging the deities Hermes and Thoth. Both these deities had similar roles in their respective cultures. Both were divine messengers, psychopomps, scribes, and custodians of wisdom. So why combine them? Why blend two gods from two different religions? Scholars argue that by combining the attributes of Hermes and Thoth into a single figure, Hermes Trismegistus became a powerful symbol of universal wisdom and the esoteric knowledge that Hermeticism sought to understand and teach. At the heart of Hermeticism lies the collection of texts known as the Hermetica, said to be written by Hermes Trismegistus. These texts were written in Greek and Latin between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. These included the 17 treatises of the Corpus Hermeticum, the Emerald Tablet, and the Perfect Discourse, which formed the bedrock of Hermetic thought. This brings us to the Kabbalion, a modern work published in 1908 by three individuals who identified themselves as the Three Initiates. The Kabbalion is a modern interpretation of Hermetic philosophy and not part of the traditional Hermetic corpus. It distills Hermetic philosophy and claims to outline its principles clearly. It's in the Kabbalion that we find the seven principles of Hermeticism, which the three authors claim are the essence of Hermetic teachings. Number one, the principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. This principle suggests that everything that happens in the universe is a result of a mental state, a conscious creation of the mind. Reality is therefore a manifestation of thought or the mind. This reminds us of the Buddhist saying, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. This hermetic principle emphasizes that reality is a mental construct and that by controlling our mind, we can control our lives. Number two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below, as below, so above. We've all heard this quote before. There's even a movie with this title. What it means is that there is a harmony, agreement, and correspondence between the physical, mental, and spiritual realms. The macrocosm is reflected in the microcosm and vice versa. So what does it mean practically? Well, it can encourage a person to see the interconnectedness of all things and understand that patterns in their own life may reflect larger universal patterns. Number three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. 
This principle posits that motion is manifest in everything in the universe. Nothing is at rest. Everything moves, vibrates, and is in a state of constant motion or change. By understanding the different frequencies of vibration, we can use this to create our reality. Number four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. This principle, much like the Confucian yin yang, suggests that opposites are the same in nature, but different in degree. In other words, opposites are actually two extremes of the same continuum. What is darkness, but the absence of light? What is quietness, but the absence of noise? All truths are but half truths, and every truth is half false. By understanding the law of polarity, we can focus on the positive instead of the negative. We can manage conflicts and opposing viewpoints to find balance. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything flows, out and in. Everything has its tides. This principle explains that there is a flow or tide to everything in the universe, and that this rhythm is evident in the rise and fall, the cycles and patterns of life and existence. Understanding this helps you to cope with change and that nothing is permanent, no matter how difficult. This too shall pass. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. This principle suggests that there is no such thing as chance, that chance is merely a term for a law not recognized or understood. It encourages you to anticipate the consequences of your actions and to take responsibility for how your actions impact the world. Number seven, the principle of gender. Gender isn't everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender exists on all planes of existence, be it physical, mental, and spiritual, and represents the masculine and feminine principles in the universe. The unity of these two energies is at the heart of creation. And when you have the balance of both, you're better able to apply all the other principles. We can all agree that these principles are quite universal. And whether you follow the hermetic tradition or not, there's something for everyone here. Okay. So remember when we mentioned that the name Hermes Trismegistus meant thrice greatest Hermes because he has mastery over three areas of wisdom, alchemy, astrology, and thergy? These three areas are encompassed within Hermeticism. Historical alchemy had a practical component and wasn't purely metaphorical or spiritual. Hermetic alchemy, however, goes beyond this. It isn't just about the transmutation of base metals into gold, but serves as a metaphor for spiritual enlightenment and the inner transformation of the soul. The soul moves from a state of imperfection to one of perfection and purity. Astrology shares the hermetic principle that the macrocosm is reflected in the microcosm. Hermetic astrology involves understanding the influences of stars and planets on human affairs and the natural world, positing that celestial events reflect or even influence events on Earth. Thurgy is about rituals designed to invoke the presence of gods or divine energies, aimed at uniting the practitioner with the divine. But beyond these three traditions, Hermeticism also syncretizes ideas and practices from other spiritual and philosophical traditions. Hermeticism might not be a mainstream spiritual path, but it has maintained a following and has had various revivals over the centuries. During the Renaissance, there was a significant revival of interest in Hermeticism among intellectuals. The Hermetic texts, particularly the Corpus Hermeticum, translated by Marsilio Ficino in the 15th century, provided a rich source of spiritual and philosophical inspiration. This influence can be found on art, philosophy, literature, and science. For example, some of Shakespeare's works are said to contain hermetic influences. The line, all the world's a stage, echoes the hermetic principle of life as a divine play or illusion. Was Shakespeare a secret hermetic, or are the hermetic principles so broad that you can't help but find echoes of them in the universal human themes of his works? you'll find arguments for both sides. Isaac Newton was said to be deeply interested in alchemy and the hermetic tradition. The hermetic principle that the microcosm reflects the macrocosm may have inspired thinkers like him to believe that by studying the natural world, one could gain insight into the divine order of the universe. Even during the enlightenment, 
with its emphasis on rational thought and empirical science, which might seem at odds with the mystical aspects of Hermeticism, the Hermetic tradition continued to hold strong. Hermeticism endures today primarily within esoteric, occult, and New Age circles, where its principles are applied to personal spiritual growth, mental mastery, and the understanding of the universe. While it does not have large numbers of adherents that mainstream religions do, Hermeticism's influence can be seen in contemporary spiritual practices, self-help literature, and the arts. Its legacy is also preserved and examined in academic fields and online communities, which reflects an ongoing interest in its teachings about the mental nature of the universe, the interconnectivity of all things, and the pursuit of knowledge and self-transformation. Despite the arcane language and complex symbolism, Hermeticism at its core is about the search for knowledge. This knowledge is not just intellectual, but experiential, involving the transformation of the seeker. By understanding the laws of nature, a Hermetic practitioner can live in harmony with them. They pursue gnosis, direct knowledge of the divine, not through faith alone, but through direct experience. Hermeticism teaches that while we may perceive separation, all is ultimately one. We are all sparks of the divine. And by realizing this, we can transcend the limitations of our earthly existence. If you found this video informative, please like it and subscribe to our channel. It helps our channel grow so we can continue making more videos like this. Thanks for watching.